Hello, this is Matt on the Moon Lambo channel. We have a Ripple executive who I cite fairly frequently on this channel stating that XRP is indeed replacing the outdated cross-border payments infrastructure. Now, the way this title, the, the title of this article reads is Ripple says XRP-based on-demand liquidity actively replacing outdated cross-border payments infrastructure. Now, uh, XRapid used to be the name for uh, what is now known as on-demand liquidity. I'm going to keep citing that. I'm sure that, uh, sure that many of you listening to me on a fairly regular basis are aware of that already, but not everybody knows yet so for a while, yet still I'm going to keep uh, mentioning that with a certain amount of regularity. But again, yes, XRapid is no longer XRapid. It's the same technology, but is on-demand liquidity. So I'm looking forward to running through this story with you. Very interesting, uh, talking about the route which things are going and progress being made at large. And I've got a few tweets from XRP community members I'm looking forward to sharing with you. Interesting thought topics. And I'm going to wrap up the video with this. And uh, also a couple Twitter comments about this from Anthony Pompliano and Goldbug Peter Schiff. But take a look at the title of this headline from AMB Crypto. Grayscale Investment Unveils Second Bitcoin Commercial for Drop Gold Campaign. Now the first commercial, which I thought was kind of funny, I have uh, covered on this channel. And so this is basically part two. And it, it does look a little bit different. Not, It's okay. You know, it's not quite as snazzy as the first one, but it's it's fine. But uh, before we get going here, if you would please delicately tap that like button. No need to get all smashy smashy with it, just a delicate tap will do. And if you just so happen to be a fan of Ripple and XRP, well my friend, you have done come to the right place. Go ahead and subscribe to the Moon Lambo channel. It's a reasonable thing to do. So I got this first story here from XRP Crypto Wolf. Thank you very much, good sir, for sending this tasty tidbit directly to my Twitter message box. Let's go ahead and dive right in here. Ripple says its XRP-powered payments platform called On Demand Liquidity is designed to trigger a foundational change to the world's aging cross-border payments ecosystem. In a new interview at Seeking Alpha, Ripple's Senior Vice President of Product Ashish Birla says the company is pushing to create an instant real-time payments infrastructure that never fails. Which is worth mentioning because as it pertains to SWIFT, SWIFT transactions, that's the incumbent, the legacy software in place since 1973, yeah it's time for an update, a 6% failure rate, 6% failure rate. And uh, Brad Garlinghouse points this out with uh, you know, it's from, from time to time. I mean, I'm sure we've all seen him in some sort of video citing this stat, and it's it's interesting. He, he always says something along the lines of, can you imagine if either 6% of your Google searches didn't work or 6% of your emails didn't get through? We'd consider that broken technology, wouldn't we? If, if 6% didn't go through yet, this is the best we have, apparently? Well, not true. The solution is indeed being built out here. And uh, Shish Burla, I'm about to quote from. By the way, if you want to follow him, here he is on Twitter. He's at AshGoBlue. I, I try to follow every time I come across a Ripple employee that I'm not following. I go ahead and follow because basically I want my entire Twitter feed to be filled with nothing but XRP-related content. So it's rare that I will follow anyone outside of that. I mean, I will follow some crypto people, but outside of that, it's pretty much just it's like nobody. It's almost all XRP and some crypto people, and that's about it. But uh, anyway, here's a, here's a, a quote from Ashish Berla now. He's been around since the very beginning. He was one of like the first several employees of Ripple. But anyway, so he says this. Despite increased attention to the space, remittance businesses still struggle to keep costs down with the World Bank citing fees as high as 7%. RippleNet is laying the foundation for these payments with on-demand liquidity, ODL, a technological offering for financial institutions to instantly source liquidity as an increasing number of upstart payment service providers and fintechs look to prioritize digital remittance systems. Uh, ODL is actively replacing the slow, expensive, and outdated payments infrastructure that exists today to address global demand for more efficient cross-border transactions. And uh, then the piece continues. Formerly known as XRapid, ODL is designed to give banks and financial institutions a regulated way to send fiat across borders in an instant using XRP as a bridge currency. And so I'd like to utilize this exact moment in time to remind you that humans have not come up with a single solution outside of utilizing a decentralized cryptocurrency or digital asset if you prefer that, that's fine. 
I'll accept either. Uh, but but and, and you know the, the only the reason that that matters, the reason that it has to be decentralized and cannot be backed by anything, it cannot be a stable coin. It's not purely the technolo- technology that's significant. Yes, of course, there's the speed, uh, the low cost for transfers, the low energy consumption. Yes, all of that matters. But the part that is not technological that matters even more, that humans could not get over prior to this technology existing, is simply one word. Trust. That's it. If you want to know why you can't use a stable coin to solve the problem that Ripple seeks to solve, if you want to know, if you want to explain to anyone human why must it be a decentralized cryptocurrency, trust is the reason. And then you can say, why does it have to be XRP? Well, it doesn't have to be XRP. You could technically use any cryptocurrency, right? You could you, you could plug Bitcoin in there. That's a bad idea because it's slow and costly. But you could throw XLM in there. So why not XLM? Well, you have to understand that when it comes to development of, of um new marketplaces, right? When it comes to development of just a new way of moving money around the world, specifically if you're talking about utilizing a cryptocurrency as a bridge currency, different actors in in the space will have different incentives. Ripple is highly incentivized to build this out, utilizing, yes, a technology that can sufficiently fill the role, uh, but they're doing it with XRP because they're incentivized to do so. That's a good thing. They hold a ton of XRP. So it could have been any other one, but it's not. And so what makes sense to me, and it's not financial advice, but what makes sense to me is to follow where the real world adoption is occurring. And there's an actual market value. Speculators like you and I see it. We've, we've, we're well researched or maybe you're not, maybe you're new to the space. That's fine. Welcome to the beginning of your journey. Then keep researching. It's very fascinating. But uh, there's a reason that people are here to stay. There's a reason this asset class is here to stay. And there's a reason, I believe, and again, not financial advice, because I don't know for sure technically where this is going, but there's a reason that I believe firmly that there are cryptocurrencies, individual cryptocurrencies that will be valued in the trillions in terms of market cap in the future. And there's a reason that I believe, based on all knowledge available today, that XRP will be one of them. Then Peace continues, Ripple has officially opened two destination corridors for ODL. One in Mexico and the other in the Philippines. The San Francisco startup says it's pushing to launch additional corridors by working with regulators and searching for new market makers. And I was talking about that the other day, too, which is highly fascinating. Uh, there was a, a Ripple commercial, in case you've missed it. I'm not going to get into the content of the commercial, but uh, there were two fiat currencies shown in that. It was the Japanese yen and, uh, and the Thai bot. And they were showing instances of money moving instantly around the world. It sounds a lot like on-demand liquidity. And they had a bunch of silly examples in the commercial, like just actors playing out roles, which would never really happen, including an astronaut in space sending money to people down below, okay, stuff like that. But, uh, but, but the point is, it was moving money instantly. And it makes me wonder if these are going to be a couple of the next corridors that they target. And I wonder if something like that would be announced during something like Swell, because we know officially it's only the third annual Swell will ever coming up here on November 7th and 8th. But we know that uh, Ripple sometimes likes to make large announcements. During Swell, like last year, when uh, the production of version of X Rapid was announced to be live. Anyway, uh, Burla says Ripple's partnership with MoneyGram, which will utilize ODL, will play a key role in the long term adoption of the technology. Here's another quote from him now. As our global partner, MoneyGram will utilize RippleNet and leverage XRP in cross border money transfers. Since MoneyGram is one of the world's largest money transfer companies, RippleNet will have the opportunity to dramatically expand its network into several high-friction payment destinations where remittances, where, uh, remittances flows are high and pain points of cross-border payments <coughs> excuse me, are felt by end users and financial institutions alike. So very fascinating stuff here. And all this is going to be built out over time, but indeed you do need pools of liquidity to make this happen. Uh, let me go ahead and hop into a tweet here now from All the Way 08, which I liked. And so there's actually originally a tweet from Neil deGrasse Tyson, a very famous astrophysicist, and I'm sure many of you are familiar with him. He's an interesting guy to listen to. Seems like he's got a fun personality. Anyway, he tweeted this out. To argue with a person who has renounced the use of reason is like administering medicine to the dead. And so all the way 08 retweeted that with this comment, which I like, put it in, you know, put it in the context of crypto. Yes, like arguing with the Bitcoin master race, it feels pointless at times. And indeed, you know, I can, who cannot sympathize with that, right? If you're in the XRP community, we've all encountered our fair share of Bitcoin max lists. Whether or not we engage with them, we've encountered them. We've seen them. They're tweeting out there. They're real humans in the world. Some of them vote. 
Uh, that's scary. All right, next tweet here. This is from XRP Neo. There's literally no other company that would push the banks and central banks towards Ripple more than what Facebook is doing with their Libra project. Think about it. And it is worth thinking about. It's uh, it, it, it's actually a fun thought exercise that I'm not, not going to delve terribly into. It. I just like the tweet from XRP Neo, so I wanted to share it with you. Uh, but obviously, it, and Brad Garlinghouse, Ripple CEO, even pointed this out. When it was announced, uh, oh, what was it? Was it David Marcus from, from Facebook, I think, uh, you know, the Libra creator, or Libra white paper creator, I should say, since Libra isn't even real yet. I think it was he that said that, uh, you know, this is going to, I'm sort of paraphrasing here, but like uh, render Western Union obsolete, essentially what they're doing. And so Brad Garlinghouse cited what they're doing as a, a call to action here. And, uh, and indeed, you know, as, a, as far as uh, from Ripple's perspective, and that's why I think this is a pretty reasonable point to make from XRP Neo, uh, Ripple cited that, you know, upon that uh, announcement of the, we, the, the, white, the uh, Libra white paper, they started just, Ripple just started closing a ton of business, like potential customers that were on the fence, that are we going to do this, are we not? They finally pulled the trigger. It was a call to action. It, it indeed was. And it also added credibility to the space. So there's a, there's a couple of things going on there. But um, I, th I think that those that are involved, you know, incumbents in the, the world of traditional finance, they don't want to lose what they have. So anything they can do to make it better, yes, in that sense, I think it'll push it along. All right, uh, next here, check this out. There's a tweet from Anthony Pompliano, which is going to lead into my last piece in this video. And it's the, the second drop gold commercial here. And uh, if you, you should check it out. It's worth watching. I think it's like 50 seconds long. And so Anthony Pompliano... Uh, Bitcoin maximalist, I like the guy. He tweeted out, Yo, Peter Schiff, nice rock, which is the end line of this particular commercial. Nice rock, making fun of gold. And uh, Peter Schiff, who I also like, even though he just doesn't get cryptocurrencies. <laughs> I still I agree with him on all sorts of stuff, but uh, he's wrong on crypto. Anyway, he, t he tweeted in response, This will go down as one of the worst timed financial ads of all time. Gold will continue to shine as Bitcoin loses its fake luster. It will dominate the global financial system long after Grayscale has filed for bankruptcy <clears throat> and Bitcoin is a mere footnote in financial history. <laughs> I'm sorry, Peter. I really like you, but that tweet is just not going to age well. Like, I mean, as, as far as the longevity of Bitcoin, okay. But uh, <clears throat> just the fact that cryptocurrencies allow, <clears throat> excuse me, allow business models to to exist that otherwise wouldn't be able to exist. That's enough reason for speculators like me and many others, perhaps you if you're listening to this, uh, it gives plenty of reason for us to be here forever. I'm sorry, Peter, you're just wrong. And uh, let's go ahead and lead into this piece after reading that now. So again, it's for maybe Crypto Grayscale Investment unveils second Bitcoin commercial for Drop Gold campaign. Grayscale Investments, one of the world's largest digital asset management firms, unveiled its second commercial for its Drop Gold campaign. The campaign is one of the firm's steps to get more investors investing in Bitcoin while driving the firm's flagship investment product, Grayscale Bitcoin Trust. In a blog post, Michael Sonnenschein, that's a fun name, a managing director at Grayscale Investments, said, quote, we are delighted to continue driving the drop gold narrative by introducing our second commercial, the next chapter in how we are helping to educate investors about the investment case for Bitcoin and Bitcoin access uh, products like GBTC. You know what I want to hear? These people that make the case for Bitcoin, because uh, many of them acknowledge that it's not being used as money. It's just being used purely as a store of value. People like Michael Novogratz um, state that it's just, it's just a store of value. How can something only be a store of it. I want to hear that argument fleshed out sufficiently. I haven't seen anybody make a reasonable argument as to why, oh, humans say it's worth this, but it doesn't do anything else, and businesses don't need it, this or that. And, you know, I've never seen a sufficient case made to that. If it can't be used for something, uh, to me, if it has staying power for the short term, okay, that's just because people are in a frenzy around the asset class, don't know how things are going to fold. That part makes sense to me. But if you're talking about perpetually Bitcoin having a high value, why? Somebody make a reasonable case to me. Anyway, piece continues. The advertisement features the hardships of mining gold, following which the miner is suggested to shift from a gold portfolio to a Bitcoin portfolio, particularly proposing a shift to Grayscale's GBTC. <clears throat> According to the blog post, the advertisement will air on not only digital and social platforms, but also television, 
uh, with the focus being major United States cities. And I wonder how effective this campaign is. If it is, then super duper for them. I hope they found something that works for them because I like businesses doing well. I want what's good for the asset class. But in terms of dropping gold, I, to, to me, it's just like, why not have a diverse portfolio that perhaps includes gold? Why not? Uh, I mean, I, I'm not saying you do that. I'm not offering financial advice. I'm just kind of sharing my thoughts on this. But anyway... Uh, here's a uh, here's a tweet from them. Announcement, our second commercial goes live today as we double down on Drop Gold with our next chapter of educating investors about investment case for Bitcoin and access products like GBTC. And then the, the rest of it just cites kind of the beginning of the, the original uh, ad that they put out on that, the Drop Gold. But uh, you can tell what you think. That's it for this video. I am not a financial advisor. Do not buy or sell anything because of anything that I say or write. That would be a very, very, very bad idea. Until next time, to the moon, Lambo!